Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu Jitsu Show. Don't forget to check out our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company and Rolls Gear, and you can find all of our old episodes at bjjshow.com. I'm Rob, and uh, Randy and I talked a bit about, uh, I guess, the defense or the uh, Detroit Urban Survival Tactics guy. I guess you know we got to jump, jump on the bandwagon and uh, help everybody else make fun of this guy. But he's a Instagram, YouTube uh, personality who shows self-defense moves that we don't really believe work but it's also we have a good laugh about that and uh, we hope you have a good laugh about what we talk about as well so like i said if you want to support the show go to bjjshow.com buy a shirt buy a patch and we hope you enjoy this episode so ladies and gentlemen it is the big jiu-jitsu show i'm rob i'm randy and we're gonna i think we're just gonna start out we're just gonna jump on the fucking dog pile and talk about talk about uh the detroit urban survival tactics guy (laughs) since since it's all over the internet of course being a martial arts podcast we have to at least give our give our opinion on this fella i feel like we were doing our fans a disservice by not but so i I think i think the interesting perspective that you and i have as opposed to some of the other people's, not only do we do jujitsu and stuff like that, but you're also law enforcement. So now you get to add that different perspective of is this stuff viable towards keeping yourself safe in a, like he said, he, he teaches law enforcement shit too, which true or not uh, is kind of concerning, at least even from my perspective. And, you know, I have very limited knowledge. I'm like, gun disarms or knife disarms i just know that it's not a good time if you have to rely on doing that yeah yeah i think we both do uh you know both military vets i'm i'm in law enforcement teach defensive tactics that's my primary job right now actually full-time training unit um also on a tactical unit so i work that end as well um so yeah one thing you'll find and i'm sure it's the same um you know across many different domains of, of law enforcement and military is Unfortunately, people that don't deserve to teach to us get the opportunity to teach to us, and then they put it in their resume that they got to teach to law enforcement. And and what they don't ever put in there is the fact that they got laughed out of the room for the bullshit they were teaching. So not everything that that we receive is quality instruction, and some, a lot of times we just throw it in the trash as soon as the person leaves. Uh, I can think of several uh, classes that I've been provided by my department where I'm that are defensive tactics related. Where I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not using that. Um, and so this guy appears to be one of those classic examples. And my thing is you had master Ken on the show back before I was, uh, on here with you. Yeah. And, you know, master Ken is, is obviously, a a persona an act and he's a jujitsu guy himself off the screen. And I love his videos. He's absolutely hilarious. He's now an actor in movies was paper tigers. We talked about that one of the previous episodes, great movie, but I, do you get the impression this is the same deal? Do you think this guy's a persona or do you think he really believes his own crap? So um, I think me walking the, uh, I guess I'm the day walker of martial arts. I, I prefer my jujitsu and Muay Thai, but still dabble in the realm of Taekwondo and stuff like that. So what's, what's interesting is sometimes you're going to run into other people who do um, believe that this type of style or whatever is the real deal. It's going to stop people. You know, I've, I, you practice against people who don't move. You practice against people who aren't going to attack one time, you know, throw that punch, move out of the way. I mean, basics, like if you start now, yeah, but if you move into like, I mean, there's a whole theory behind that, but there's, there are groups and schools and clubs and stuff like that, that do have instructors that when they teach this art and they get people, they bring them in, they're like, Hey, look, you know, this is the art. And they're like, bro, this is the fucking art. I'm, I'm 100% in on this art and nobody's like idea can change it because they're they're not, they're not very educated on different martial arts, not educated on self-defense. I mean, it's no different than 
taking anybody for any hobby saying like, Hey, this is the way the hobby's done. And then they run with it because they have no knowledge outside of it. So I do think this guy either like questions it maybe, but kind of leans into it or completely believes it because unlike master Ken, master Ken has people that he makes skits with uh, stuff like that. And, you know, if you don't believe master Ken's not a character, well, you know, you know, we have some other issues we need to talk about, but this guy has a school. He charges people money. He has, what, he has a fucking patrol boat. I don't know any martial arts school that has a patrol mm-hmm. boat besides this guy. I mean, we can start one. Well, I want a boat, but well, all, mean, the, all the air, all the airsoft rifles he's got mounted in the back wall. Yeah, and the little stupid microphone that he's got in his ear all the time. Yeah, the Bluetooth, the sign of the douche. Who's he talking to? Do you think? Maybe his handler. I mean, I think he's probably honestly, if I had to venture a guess, this is just yeah. like a ploy by like some fucking top secret government. And that's like, you know, his fucking handlers in his ear. He's like, okay, now do something stupid and let, you know, charge people money. I have a, I have an additional theory. Yeah. And it probably has their own of who's in his ear, right? That's a pretty yeah. good one you got. I think it's Steven Seagal. Oh, that's what he's been doing lately. Yeah, I think I think Steven Seagal is in his ear telling him how to do these moves. Well, Steven Seagal did teach Anderson Silva how to do the front kick. So he did. He, he's taught a lot of people how to do a lot of their finishing moves. I mean, that, that guy is. is pretty much the baddest dude on the planet. Although, if you've seen him run in his movies, what was it when he was Nico and was it a, was it above the law? Yeah, above the yeah. That was the one when he was uh, the cop. Well, fuck, that doesn't narrow yeah. it down. Let me rephrase that. Oh, yeah. It's the one where he beat up. <laughs> <everybody>. <laughs> Steven Seagal was uh he played Nikita Master in law enforcement. That's like fucking all of his movies. Um every one of his movies. <laughs> uh I think that was above the law. Cause um yeah, that was the one where they had like the the backpack bomb in the church or whatever. Yeah, he uh yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, back in the day, some of his fight scenes were pretty sweet, right? Like, I mean, I remember one time he like wrist locked through a dude through a, a window, which that was pretty badass, but yeah, you know. Um so are the so are like the crouching tiger hidden dragon fight scenes, and I've never seen a motherfucker fly. So um yeah, this guy, I've watched a lot of his videos because my buddies at work send them to me all the time. It's kind of like a gag thing because I teach defensive yeah. tactics and you just think it's funny. You know, hey, we should be doing this stuff at our training next training day. This is what we should try, you know, crap like that. I get messages like that constantly. And I was kind of hoping this was just a very elaborate persona of this guy. I thought that that'd be really creative and he just you know sticks to it stubbornly and and doesn't give it up. Master Ken made it pretty well known. It was a it was a persona. Yeah, uh, I felt like if, you know if you could read between the lines, you could definitely pick up on the fact that it was just humor that he was putting out. Um, but his video "A Thousand Ways to Attack the Groin" is one of my all time favorite videos on YouTube. It's hilarious. But anyway, this guy, I think he really does believe that he's teaching legit stuff, and his his wannabe tactical swag is literally obnoxious. Um, and I mean, a lot of the techniques he teaches are just pure bullshit. And I think when you do martial arts long enough, you start to see these things and you look at it. If you, and I could actually understand why there are people out there that don't train in martial arts at all that think that the stuff he's showing is legit. Because I remember when I first got into martial arts, I trained with an instructor when I was real little, I didn't stick with him. Yeah. He taught some, some bullshit, right? And it's not that hard to make a move look legit because it resembles things that are legit. It doesn't mean that they are though. Like there's just commonalities in some of the moves and you got these people that play along with them. It's almost like the touchless Kung Fu master that, you know, people buy into what this guy is putting out. And the sad part is, is that I don't mind it if you're doing it as a gag, but make it known that it's a gag like master Ken did. Yeah. Because otherwise, you've got people that are watching this channel. They're going to try to regurgitate these moves, and they're going to get themselves hurt or killed in a real situation. Yeah, and I mean that that goes with like a lot of the um, self defense videos. Like the real quick, like five easy tips that you can do to stop an attacker. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we're going to take these five easy tips that are now like it's a video you've watched that's three minutes long. Okay. You've only seen it once. You're like, oh, that is cool. You know, I should do that if I'm ever attacked. And now you're taking that three-minute video, put it in your memory somewhere, 
that you mm-hmm. you know stuff back there with like the recipe for chocolate chip cookies and then like that weird time you embarrassed yourself in like front of your english class in high school and now let's when we don't we don't let's not talk about that on the air though okay yeah we don't that's 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 pushed out of my brain for a reason it's really repressed but um <laughs> you know now yeah. now in a stressful situation you're gonna be like you're 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 totally expected to be able to go yeah what was that thing again oh yeah stomp on the inside of the shin as opposed to hyperventilating and freaking out and i mean that's not like saying that doesn't happen to people like in any self-defense situation it's when people fall back on their training that you know that's where it helps them a three minute a three minute video showing five different tips on how to keep yourself safe versus actually practicing consistently if you are serious about self-defense are two completely different things well and and there's an easy there's an easy uh test for this yeah right it's called pressure pressure testing your tactics or your, your techniques and, and that's what jiu-jitsu does on a daily basis. That's why it's a very effective system. People ask me the question, why is jiu-jitsu the one that you, you stand behind and support? Why is that the, the magical art that defeats all? And I'm like, I don't think it defeats all. But I think what makes it strong, just like wrestling, just like judo, just like sambo, or any of these grappling-based arts or boxing or Muay Thai as far as striking arts, the reason why those are strong systems is because they pressure test their tactics, meaning they spar. They apply it with against resistance from another person that wants to impose their will and skill against you, right? And when you look at it, even down to the the tactics that you'd use, like on a on a um, tactical unit or in the military, what do you guys do? Simunitions training and stuff, right? So we're pressure testing these tactics, and that's what draws out the flaws or the vulnerabilities of these different tactics or techniques. And so, if, if this all it would take to dispel a lot of these these things that he's teaching is just some pressure testing applied against somebody resisting not one of your little cronies that's going along with the the program and you're going to find out real quick how little these work and it's been the same in law enforcement defensive tactics we've had people come to us and say well they taught us to do this armbar takedown thing for jiu-jitsu guys that don't train in defensive tactics or aikido an armbar takedown is not a legit jiu-jitsu armbar it's grabbing the wrist and pushing on the back of the elbow and taking somebody to the ground. Well, the problem with that technique is that against resistance, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. All it takes is a rotation of the hand and a pull of the elbow. And that arm bar is effectively gone. And something that a jiu-jitsu guy would do without even thinking about it, if you tried to grab that move, because you're not isolating the limb sufficiently to actually make it work. So, you know, it's, it's, you take all these techniques this guy shows and you pressure test them. And I would guess that about 95% of them are going to fail. No, I agree. I agree hundred percent on that actually, because um, so when you were talking about that, you know, and I was thinking about this earlier too, because there was, um, there's a guy on uh, TikTok or Instagram, you know, something you youngsters use. And <laughs> oh, he was on B, like somebody posted on the uh, BJJ subreddit and it showed him kind of debunking or not debunking kind of like um, showing how the takedowns he's doing doesn't really work against somebody. So he talked about putting his fingers in the notch, the, you know, the, uh, the tracheal the jugular notch, notch, jugular yeah. notch, whatever it is, uh, yeah. like yeah. rich handing the nose, like in the jaw and other shit like that. And the guy pretty much was just moving out of the way. Like he put his hand like under his nose and just grabbed it and like pulled it off of him. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in the video, the guy's taking down his student, no problem. And I was kind of thinking because I've been there myself, um, not not just like jujitsu sometimes, but like you know, like starting out, like oh shit, I don't want to upset the uh, upset the instructor or whatever. So you know, if he's going to do the move, I'm going to demo being a good being a good demo partner, and mm-hmm. you know, just be like, oh yeah, shit, that hurts so bad, like you know, and yeah. fall down, make it look make it look good, right? And then eventually, I was like, you know, doing jujitsu and stuff, like okay, you know, maybe I don't do that because it doesn't work out real well that way so you just got to kind of do what your body's supposed to be doing then you know we're going through the whole like oh why is jiu-jitsu effective because it's making me do the shit anyways but is it i wonder if it's kind of a combination of they don't want to piss off the ultimate tactical instructor or uh and and they actually believe the shit works so like that's that's kind of (laughs) what i was thinking too like maybe it's almost a uh goes back to being uneducated, being ignorant kind of to some of the other different martial arts. Like, is this like, Oh, you believe it. So it's going to work. 
and therefore just like the no touch knockouts you're fucking falling all over the place when somebody just jazz hands at you well and i think too you know it's funny when you think about that uh, i know you've taught classes i've taught classes in jiu-jitsu and what's funny is when you're teaching with some new people brand new people you show them a a sequence of attacks so instead of just showing one technique you show a sweep into an arm bar let's say right yeah and what will happen is you, the, the student will sweep the other student and the other student just kind of goes like limp noodle and falls in a super awkward fashion and doesn't act like a human being naturally would in that situation. Yeah. So then the arm bar is not there at the end because they're in some convoluted fucked up position. And you're like, hey, I need you to actually kind of resist this technique a little bit. And they're not comfortable doing that because of what you're just talking about. Yeah. And that's another reason why you can tell that jiu jitsu is more effective is because it actually even when you're practicing the techniques requires a little bit of resistance because you have to be able to kind of create that realistic environment. And the problem is when you look at a lot of systems, the way they're taught, even I'm going to say this, I mean, there are good Krav Maga schools out there. I'm not shitting on the art in totality, but there are a lot of schools now in America, their Krav schools are run like some bullshito systems where what you kind of touched on earlier, the guy throws a punch and then he just freezes like Sub-Zero just came in the room and just fucking shot him with some ice. Right. And then the other guy gets to just throw this massive, 25 hit combination on them without any type of response or movement and it's not it's not conducive with reality and so and, and, and that's again what you see i mean i've got his instagram pulled up on my phone right now so i'm looking down at there's just countless video after video after video and one more thing too we talked about this the other day when i was teaching uh, at the department and we got a, a fresh batch of recruits that just graduated the police academy that came to us. And so what we're doing now is we're doing like a transitions academy to basically undo the bullshit that they're taught. Because unfortunately in the police academy, um, there, there's a lot of outdated material that's taught because people teaching it are retired law enforcement from like the eighties and nineties. And so do you, we have to go in there and fix a lot of the things that they're taught that it's just not really applicable or is not very effective. And big part of my role is the defensive tactics piece. And we've got them in there. And I said, well, what do they teach you if you go to approach somebody to take them into custody? You're like, hey, got a warrant for arrest. You just turn around, put your hands behind your back. And the person was just like, yeah, no, nah, not doing that. How were you taught to address that from that point forward? And they, they're basically taught to go for the wrist and do like some kind of stupid wrist lock, finger lock type of thing. And I'm like, see, this is the problem, though, is they're not teaching you in a realistic setting, realistic environment. And the people they're teaching you clearly didn't really deal with that very often right? Times are changing. We're getting more resistance and more blowback now than ever before in the history of law enforcement, right? Use of forces are going through the roof. Um, violent resistance is going through the roof. And so these officers are going to get tested 100% when they hit the street. It's going to happen at some point. And I said, your small joint manipulation, fine motor skills go out the window when you're in a real encounter because of the stress, inoculation, the adrenaline, it's not going to be there. Gross motor skills go up. Um, and so you they, they need to look at these things and, and train realistically. They're not being taught that in the academy. So you look at this guy, he's got a ton of wrist lock takedown things that he works in here. He even does it from like a knife defense or a gun disarm going to small joint. Like, let me tell you something. If a guy puts a gun to your head, if you're a law enforcement, if a guy actually presses that gun up against your head, you better hope that he pushes it out of battery. Otherwise you're dead because nobody robs cops of their wallets. Right. Um, if, if somebody pulls their gun on you, you're better off creating space, trying to find cover, returning fire, getting to your own weapon system. That's your disarm, right? But we're talking about this from a civilian self-defense perspective. Uh, somebody puts their a gun to your head, give them whatever the fuck they want, yeah. right? Yeah. If that's stress, you are not going to be doing some small joint manipulation, Aikido, wrist lock, throw, gun disarm, pulling the slide off the gun bullshit. Not happening. This is not Jet Li, okay? Um it's it's game over at that point game set match so this guy i'd like to roll with him honestly i mean he looks like a big dude but i don't really give a fuck you better uh i mean if he wears the shin guards you might be fucked because those look like they hurt if he has to pass your guard i would even kickbox with him <laughs> maybe we can set it up man i'd be down for that i'd like to uh like to see how how that all goes down. I'd like to see if Wait, he can how, actually how, keep his Bluetooth headset in while he fights somebody, though. So that would, yeah, I know because he's got to get those instructions from Steven Seagal to survive that. Um, and then also, I, let's try some of these uh, knife takeaways with a shock knife. Let's try some of these gun takeaways with a sim gun, right? 
Uh, and since you're such a badass, don't even worry about wearing like an actual face covering. Just cover your eyes with the glasses. So this way, when that sim round hits you in the forehead and hurts like a motherfucker, you can realize your stuff doesn't work. I'm pretty sure that one of the things he taught was like a gun defense after getting shot. Oh, <clears throat> uh, okay. It was something like taking around to the chest and then it's like, you've been shot. I'm like, I'm not going to, mm. have you been shot? Have you actually been shot? Like, I'm going to take advice right. from somebody who's actually been shot. And I imagine somebody who's been shot in the chest that close is not going Hey, you're gonna have to uh, wrist lock the shit out of this guy and throw him, and then like, no, that's that seems to be a little unrealistic. I know that's 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 where it's unrealistic to me is getting shot in the chest. Okay, no, but a lot of yeah. it is, and I mean, it still goes into just just bullshit, man. It's fucking bullshit, and I would like in a sick way kind of want to see the statistics on people who have watched these videos and have gotten hurt or killed in scenarios that they have unfortunately been in. And I think what makes this guy a little more, a little worse than most people is that he's actually like out there trying to do like security details and shit. It's almost like, I don't know, man, like I've, I've got some opinions on security, some good, some bad. It all depends, but like actively trying to go he's out there. He's got 159,000 followers on Instagram right now. I mean, I, and I, I'm what are we doing, that, man? Fuck. I guess, I guess a lot of them are probably watching because it's like we talked about before we started recording. It's like a train wreck. You can't help but stare at it. That's true. I'm hoping the majority of those followers are in that, that position, but um, it's disturbing. And well, think about it like this. From the jiu-jitsu standpoint, anybody watching, obviously, hopefully you're a jiu-jitsu guy. If you're not and you're watching our podcast, hey, welcome, but I don't know what you're doing. Um, but think about it from the jiu-jitsu perspective. You go watch a technique on YouTube you've never seen before. Are you going to be able to regurgitate that move tomorrow in rolls? Probably not. It's going to take – you're going to have to watch that technique on YouTube and then go practice a lot of the finer points with somebody at the gym that actually has the patience and tolerance to to do that with you yeah. and, and, and do it that way. But you're not going to be able to just regurgitate it like that. And so it's the same thing with what he's teaching. That's another reason why I never really understood the point of, of uh, Instagram videos like this. It's unfortunate I'm not around, man, because that whole thing of like trying it with shock knives, I actually would be interested in doing. And then, yeah. uh, I mean, do uh, like if you're the kid. one with the knife. Do what? <laughs> if you're the, I said, if you're the one with the knife, I wouldn't want to be the one trying his moves against it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Getting... Like, I don't mind getting electrocuted or shocked or whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm... yeah. I mean, we just got to wait a little bit. Maybe we could do that and see how it goes. If this guy's still, because we're just riding the riding the wave of popularity with this with this fuck face right now. So, yeah, if he's still popular in a couple months, we totally could do that. I think that'd be good. Do you want to get? Out, I mean, like that one video I sent you. I know you didn't get it yet, but that that's probably. I I feel like that was doctored by somebody else and actually made better. Um, but that one's pretty damn funny. If he puts out content like that, I think he'll stay around for a while. <laughs> Dope. I like it. That's uh, maybe we should start doing that. That's like in a un like if we didn't have ethics and morals and stuff like that, I really think did we talk about this before? Like making some sort of like pyramid scheme self defense thing where we just oh, yeah give like people fake certifications and then tell them to recruit others to pay for their certifications. And then we just give out like a couple, like this guy, give out a couple lessons a week that, uh, we just need to come up, we, we need to come up with some really obnoxious videos and just post them and get all these followers on Instagram and just make a fortune. Dad, yeah, damn our fucking conscience, man. We're f- Maybe we, we should, video. Huh? Yeah, we should make a chan- We should make a channel where we, where we demonstrate jujitsu techniques in like some, ridiculous outfits like g-strings and shit man got an only fans it's not <laughs> i don't advertise it but you know man's gotta eat so i think <laughs> i'll uh, i'll wash a couple of the g-strings we'll be uh we'll be good to go on that get uh we'll do all triangles whole triangle series yeah, and nothing can, but g-strings we can sell ranked uh slingshots <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome let's do that just a uh, <laughs> we get the Borat, uh, yeah, the speedo, 
Yeah, but yeah. just like but ranked, man. That's that's what ranked. we need to do. Charge put a put a logo like right there on the crotch. That'd be perfect. Yeah, the big jiu jitsu logo. For some people it would just say big, but you know, for others it would say big jiu jitsu. It just kind of depends. <laughs> <laughs> so it would just be half the Sasquatch. Sucks to be you, you know. <laughs> But we don't yeah. judge, man. You know, we don't judge here. No judgment zone. There are bigger people and smaller people. Yeah. yeah. Big Jiu Jitsu just isn't for big people, man. I mean, it's, I think, yeah, it's a podcast with, I don't even think we've had too many giant people on here besides me yeah. and uh, James Foster. He's a fucking giant ass dude. So I think yeah, we've had a majority of smaller good. people on the, the show. So yeah it was just rebrand at this point or i'm just too set in the ways we're too set in the ways we've already bought too many shirts big heart you know big heart for the game you know yeah we love it all but so why isn't steven seagal doing this then i feel like he's a little better well actually he's in some legal trouble now still actually with all the uh allegations of him sexually assaulting people because he's just a giant it, just steven seagal has just been a continuous piece of shit for years now with his tinted sunglasses and dude i mean that guy doesn't need to sexually assault anybody he can just like mind fuck them into submission he doesn't even need to he's he's, he's steven seagal man he taught anderson so did you ever see the uh andre galval video where he was making fun of seagal at Anderson. No. dude it's fucking i'll send it to you after this as well it's it's he pretty much walks up to uh anderson silva he has like a couch cushion under his shirt he's wearing a bandana has sunglasses on his walks up with his hands crossed he's like now i'm gonna show you a move like you know he's <laughs> and he just and karate chops anderson silva like right in the neck and <laughs> anderson silva just like almost falls over laughing it's it's pretty fucking funny but uh I don't understand people that believe themselves to be that special. I mean, because I mean, I tell the guys all the time when I teach at the department or at the gym, like I'm not, I don't have all the answers. There are people out there that are way, 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 I'm a nobody. Uh, but it's not me that that's effective and good at it. It's the, the techniques. It's the system, you know, like, I think I'm just, it, I was going to say, I think it's a sign of a good instructor, to be honest with you. Um, being able to admit that you don't have all the answers. Um, anytime you have somebody that says that they have all the answers and that you don't need to go continue your education, that's kind of a red flag in my opinion, because nobody fucking nobody, like you said, has all the answers. There's, and there's, there's, there's always somebody bigger and better. There's always somebody that knows more. There's going to be something new that comes out that's better than what we did before. It's just a constant evolution and you should want that evolution to happen consistently because it means the art is continuing to thrive and, and develop. The last thing we want is for jujitsu to, to, to kind of like stall out and become stagnant and water down. It's a constant battle against that. And then we end up like this fucking guy. <laughs> I'm just doing TikTok videos for self-defense, getting laughed at by people who don't even train. That's yep. That's wild to me, man. Like you're just leaning in, leaning in on it, and going from there. So before we uh, head out, do you have anything else you'd like to say to our friends and listeners out there? No, not really. No, I think uh, <clears throat> just happy to be here doing this. Life is short, so you got to enjoy what you do. Get out there, train. Don't take it for granted. Don't skip a day. Ilio's watching. <laughs> Good oh, a t-shirt that said it to a day and i loved it I, it had a like a drawing of ilio gracie like a portrait and it said don't skip a day ilio's watching that oh that's awesome that's dope i like that yeah. shirt actually yeah um i guess kind of reiterate what you were saying just keep trying to do, do your thing don't listen to this guy on tiktok you know if it seems too good to be true and some guys all the answers he probably doesn't and you know buy our stuff make us tiktok famous i mean i'm we have you know stuff. Yeah, we got shirts and patches, man. Yeah, we need to do more. Yeah, we do. That's that's next phase. But uh, yeah, so we do appreciate you all listening. I know you don't have to. So once again, it's been another episode of the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. I'm Rob. I'm Randy. I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>